I really just have to start practicing what I preach. And welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys had a fabulous week. It is Friday at the time that I am recording this and I'm all done with work. So that means I get to sit down and hang out with you. Plus I'm, I'm kind of toying around with uh, recording in the afternoons as opposed to the mornings because I feel like I'm a little bit more awake. <laughs> I hope that you are sitting and knitting and chilling and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, wow, that was that was quite rambly. Um, but I, I have a cat at my feet. Would you like to say hello, Bella? And um, we've got a cat. Bella, are you happy that it's Friday? Are you excited? Are you excited for the weekend? I certainly am. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get cozy. We're gonna do some knitting, maybe some sewing. But yeah, do you have any uh, housekeeping notes that you would like to touch on before we get into the nitty gritty of things? No? We've got it all covered? No announcements or anything? Okay. All right, I think we're good. I think we're ready to get into the meat of the episode. So without further ado, <laughs> grab a cup of something, gather around, and let's get into things. I did not touch on elephants in the room last week. So again, Margot the mannequin, my lovely assistant, is wearing the Stoker shawl, a shawl that I designed uh, using also my hand-dyed yarns, Volun Vine yarns, in the aptly titled Stoker colorway. But that is what Margot the mannequin's wearing. I will link to where you can find the pattern uh, down below. And yeah, it was, it was just such a fun shawl to design. I think I designed it maybe three years ago, definitely pre-pandemic, um, but it was very much inspired by Victorian garments um, like it has buttons down the center uh, if you look back at fashion from around the Victorian era a lot of dresses had like that center line of buttons sometimes in the front or the back to mimic that style I incorporated baubles all along along the center of the the shawl where you make the increases um, so yeah it, it was just a really fun pattern the baubles only occur once every other couple of rows uh, and I do have a tutorial on how to make a bauble so I'll link to that up in the ether over here uh, or the doobly doo whatever whatever you want to call it and I am wearing the stripes pullover once again by by Andrea Maori, uh, also in my own hand dyed yarns, uh, Volum Vine yarns on my new vo on my new Vaux base. I should mention that this was knit on my DK base, my Smitten DK, which is a merino nylon cashmere blend four ply, super buttery soft. I, it's easily one of my favorite favorite bases that I dye. I'm actually going to be dyeing it next week. So uh, if you want to stay in the loop as far as, you know, my shop updates, um, what's coming in the shop, definitely subscribe to my newsletter down below because I send out a newsletter letting you know what's coming in the shop every week. Just a shameless self-promotion right there. <laughs> but um, Yes, uh, again, this is the Stripes Pullover in my new Vaux base, which is a single ply superwash merino um, using many Colorways, I think four colorways. Yeah, I have. I dyed it on Grim, uh, Tiptoe, by Candlelight, and Courtesan. So four colorways, and I think this might be one of the last episodes that you see me wearing a garment until until the next season because the weather. It's getting warm, guys. It's warming up very quickly, and yeah, summer, summer is, is nearly here. I, I can, I, I feel it, I feel it, it's in the air. <laughs> so uh, I think this week I'm going to call it and pack in all of my, my hand-knit garments uh, until the next uh, season when things start to get cool again. Um, so until then, it's, it's probably just gonna be a lot of shawls, or at least Margot's gonna be rocking a lot of shawls in the coming months. So uh, I hope you guys are excited for that. All right, I think that covers elephants in the room. Moving along, let's let's chat works in progress because I have made quite a, a big dent in my Badger and Bloom. And this is a beautiful pattern by Anne Vensel. It's a color work uh, pullover with very, very simple but effective uh, color work in the yoke. Just ver lots of vertical lines, very simple but uh, it definitely makes an impact if you use, um, you know, really high contrast yarns. However, mine is on the other end of the spectrum, a very, very low contrast. Um, so here she is. How beautiful is this, guys? It is making me 
so happy. I mean, granted, the as I just mentioned, the weather is warming up. So this, you know, uh, when I finish this, this will just kind of have to be packed away until, you know, again, the next season. But uh, I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying knitting this. I love the ombre effect happening. I love the mauveness <laughs> that's happening, obviously. Uh, I saw this, uh, I was inspired to cast this on after going to my local yarn shop, uh, Pick Up Every Stitch in Mount Kisco. I saw a sample there, uh, knit out of these exact colors, and, you know, me and my obsession with mauve, I could not resist. So uh, the lovely ladies that helped me there, I believe it was Beth, uh, who helped me pick out all the yarn and worked out all the yardage for me. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know if you watched this, but uh, it's truly, the women that work at that shop could not they go above and beyond when it comes to helping you um, pick out a project or, you know, pick out yarn. It's, it's, it's wonderful. But yes, if you are in the area, definitely check out Pick Up Every Stitch. Uh, they, it's truly a, a wonderful, beautiful store. But anyway, as you can see, I've separated the sleeves. We are, we are on Body Island. However, I did run into a little bit of a hiccup. I basically, I'm basically following this pattern verbatim. Um, I'm knitting the medium size, which is a 40 inch bust circumference. I like my sweaters nice, big and roomy and cozy. Um, so I'm going with the medium size and again, knitting the pattern verbatim. So she has you cast on with a smaller needle size and then switch to a larger needle size to accommodate uh, or make up for uh, your gauge and tension in the, uh, the color work. Anyway, I typically don't do this, but I have noticed recently that my gauge has been a little wonky when I knit color work. So for and giggles, I did, um, I did just follow the pattern and size up to a size 10. She has you switch back to smaller needles and do short row shaping in the back. So that is what I did here. So you can see I did a little bit of short row shaping. Um, and then after I separated for the sleeves, I just continued knitting and knitting in the round and noticed that my gauge was significantly tighter. I do not, again, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but it is a bit tight. It feels tight when I'm knitting with it and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not liking it. So I am going to be ripping back a couple of rows, not all the way. I'm not going to redo the, the short row shaping. I don't think that'll make too much of a difference, but I am just going to rip back to right before the sleeve separation. Um, and just continue using the US size 10 needles. Um, again, I'm not concerned with the, the sweater being overtly big just because Again, I like my sweaters nice and roomy. So, uh, but yeah, just a little bit of a hiccup. Nothing, nothing terrible to write home about. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I've lately, me and color work, I've noticed my gauge has just been, it hasn't been right. But using the size 10, this worked out really beautifully. So um, yeah, anyway. I think that's all I have to say about it for now, but uh, yeah, otherwise I am, again, a wonderfully written pattern. Uh, I haven't really run, I, and many people have let me know in the comments that, you know, Anne Vensel's patterns can be a little tricky or difficult. Aside from the gauge situation, I have yet to run into any significant hiccups so far. So far, this has been a very straightforward. If anything, I would say the pattern's a little wordy. It's a little over explained, but, uh, it, but I feel like the more information that's provided, the better. And she does provide, you know, a written instructions for special techniques and links to tutorials. So um, I feel like, you know, sometimes the more information, the better. So anyway, so far, so good. As far as fit, I don't think I'm too concerned because I did try the sample on at the shop. I'm assuming this will fit the same, if not very similar. So yeah. Um, I think that's all I want to say about it. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Sandinus Garn uh, in their cost space, which is a super beautiful blend of, um, I think it's just alpaca. Let me see. It's in my stash over here. So I'm using two colorways. So this one is, they don't, they don't give any colorway names. It's uh, the mauve colorway is, um, let me see, what is it? Uh, 4342. And then this bunny brown, <laughs> this bunny brown colorway is 3161 in case you're curious. But yeah, just a really beautiful blend of 62% uh, baby alpaca, 9% uh, I believe wool and 29% nylon. And you know, I truly appreciate when nylon is blended in with fiber just to give it that extra sturdiness. It gives it just, you know, like over time, I feel like wool wears, um, 
And just that little bit of uh, nylon can give it that extra sturdiness and longevity, if that makes any sense. So uh, I am I'm never deterred when I see nylon in in yarn. Moving along to crochet, uh, I did cast on a granny square cardigan. This is a pattern from Patents Australia that, according to Ravelry, was out of print and no longer published. I couldn't find it any anywhere. And a lovely member of my YouTube channel, Natalia, she hosts the Acorn Knits podcast or YouTube channel, I should say. And her channel is delightful as well. I truly, truly enjoy catching catching up with her whenever she publishes a uh, an episode. Um, but she reached out to me. She said, you know, I I've probably told the story a million times, it feels like, but um, I'm, I'm gonna say it again, just because it's, it's so wonderful. <laughs> Natalia reached out to me. She said, hey, I'm in Australia and my local yarn shop actually has the book in stock and I'd be happy to send it along to you. So she so wonderfully sent me the copy and it arrived. Um, and here it is. It exists. I have it. Um, so here, uh, the pattern that I'm knitting is from this book called Modern Crochet, 12 Designs for You and Your Home. Uh, and again, it's by Patton's Australia. Um, so Natalia, again, truly thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity and for sending this my way. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> Awesome, thank you, thank you. I can't get over it. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is the pattern that I am currently crocheting. Let me find it. Doo -doo -doo. And there are some really, really great patterns in here as well, uh, like other additional patterns. I kind of want, I totally want to make the, the crochet granny square on the cover, um, but this is the pattern that I'm currently making. It feels a little out of character for me, but for some reason I've seen I've been seeing crochet granny square garments everywhere lately. And I occasionally I like hopping on the bandwagon of, you know, what's trendy and whatnot. I can't help it. I'm human. Since I've been seeing all these granny square garments floating around, I, I kinda want a part of the action. So um, you know, and of course being a knitter and, and dabbling in crochet, I'm of course I'm I'm like I can totally make one of those. So I'm slowly but surely amassing some granny squares, guys. Um, so here they are, here's my nice little stack. Uh, I think I have 16 so far. Again, this is this is slow and steady wins the race, but um, as you can see, I am working with two different color schemes. Unlike the, the pattern, which is all multicolored, I'm sticking to a main color palette and this is this is it basically. So um, I'm just gonna make alternating squares of squares going from light to dark and dark to light. And then I'm gonna grab these together. And lately I've just been vibing with this whole kind of like rust red peach neutral theme. I don't know if it's if that's also trendy. I think I think it might be, but I'm just I'm vibing with it and I'm just going with it. So uh, yeah, I, you know, and I was, and I was talking about on the Monday Waffle, my bonus vlog for members, uh, that I publish once a week, um, I, I was mentioning how I just envisioned this cardigan going with a roller skating outfit, just wearing it, like chucking it over a tank top with some cut off jeans, who am I? Who is this person that I'm describing? I have no idea. I just have this vision of a roller skating outfit in this cardigan. Um, that and, you know, whenever I go to the beach with Dennis, we go up to Cape Cod a couple of times during the summer and it gets chilly and we go to the beach a lot and it gets chilly and windy on the beach. And I can just imagine having a granny square cardigan to chuck on, you know, to keep the wind from gusting at me and just being overall cold um, on the beach in the summer. Um, I, I feel like it'll come in handy, but um, you're probably wondering what yarn this is. Uh, and this is yarn that I picked up from Jimmy Bean's Wool. It's 100% uh, cotton, um, fingering weight, by she it's Chefies Katona. So here's the label. I absolutely love the label, guys. And as I mentioned last week, super wonderfully budget yarn. I think I got each skein for like three under three dollars. So that all that to say that I do not regret my purchase. Um, it's just been you know unlike other cotton blends or brands that I've worked with, this is just really nice cotton to work with. I have no complaints whatsoever. It feels nice in my hands. It feels soft. It feels, it feels like nice cotton, you know? Moving along, some new yarn actually came into my life. Uh, and <laughs> honestly, I have no business buying any more yarn. I have no business casting on any other projects because I've got a lot, I have a lot on the go right now, guys. And it's getting, I'm not gonna lie, it's getting, it's getting a tiny hair overwhelming. So I, I really, I think this is gonna be it. I have to pace myself. Oh. 
Uh, anyway, we shall see. We shall see. But the last week, uh, Kim and Jana from the Knit Together with Kim and Jana YouTube channel announced that they were hosting a knit along in collaboration with Paula of Mayak Yarns and <laughs> Isabel Kramer, the designer. I mean, talk about talk about a collaboration. That that. That's nothing to sniff at, guys. I, I mean, I, I am super excited for them. Truth be told, I was not planning on joining the knit along until <laughs> until I caught uh, their live stream that uh, was hosted by by Paula of Mayak. Uh, every once in a while, uh, Paula hosts a an interview, a, a live stream interview uh, with you know various makers and knitters in in the community, and um, I, w I was just super excited to have caught the live stream. That, that never happens, guys. I always miss live streams, but last Friday I was done with work five o'clock I sat down checked my YouTube feed and lo and behold it was the live stream was just beginning so I dipped in grabbed my knitting um, and I they, they just started showing patterns and talking about it and you know building up all this excitement and I was just like I want in on the fun guys it's a casual knit along but there there's a couple of uh, caveats where um, you have to knit with Mayak yarn uh, and or uh, knit a an Isabel Kramer pattern and um, and I immediately thought of two skeins that I had purchased at a Mayak trunk show several years ago. Here, so I purchased two of these skeins. Uh, this is Mayak Lace Weight. It's 100% baby yak. Uh, it is super soft. And this colorway, guys, <gasps> I mean, it's very similar. Very, very similar to my By Candlelight color. Uh, this is their mustard colorway. But I've just been coveting it for... So I, I think like about four four years already. It's just been sitting in my stash, burning a hole. Um, so when they announced the the make along or the knit along, I was just you know sign me up, sign me up. So I was browsing Ravelry for a pattern. I had two of these skeins, and let me see, there's 180 yards per skein. So that means I had you know like close to 700. Let me see, can I math? Can I do this? Yeah, like, so, uh, you know, close to 800, like under 800 yards, which really couldn't get me a sweater, albeit it could probably get me, a, you know, a small tank or tee, but I, I prefer to knit sweaters, and honestly, like, I, I'm not really in the mood for knitting a shawl at the moment. But then Paula started sharing patterns by Isabel Kramer, and then uh, Kim and Jana, who were hanging out at Pick Up Every Stitch, uh, they were wearing their Isabel Kramer, you know, shawls and sweaters, and, and the staff <laughs> were jumping in on the live stream showing their makes, and then, yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about, talk about ultimate enabling, guys. Um, I... I Anyway, long story short, I fell in love with the Fiola Pullover by Isabel Kramer, and I was like, that, that is what I want in it. But, you know, I, it, it turns out that I would have to get at least four more skeins of the, of the mustard colorway. And I was concerned, I was, con because it's been four years, this has been sitting in my stash, I was concerned that the, the dye lots would be off. So I emailed customer service, AKA Paula. I had no idea she was running customer service, but she got back to me in a very timely manner um, and addressed my concern. Uh, she said, yes, <laughs> the, the, the colorway, the dye lots would most likely be off. So I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's rip it off like a bandaid. Let's start from scratch. Let's just order six fresh skeins of mustard. And you know, I have to say the dye lots, I mean, there is a little bit of a difference. So this is the original right here. Oops. And then this is the new one. You re I mean, this one is a little bit more gold and this one's a little darker, um, but really, you cannot tell. Um, I feel like this one is a little more marled, if that, like, a little, has a little more heather to it. Um, but honestly, I think if I were to blend these together, you really couldn't tell the difference. Either way, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not unhappy about having two extra skeins in my stash. I mean, what, how terrible could that be? I mean, because this color, this color just makes me happy. Um, yeah, I mean, I typically am obsessed with the color mauve, but I do, I do have an affection for the gold here and there. So the mustard, the mustard yellows, the golds, um, yellow spring greens, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very very happy and excited to cast on the Fiola. The knit along, if you're curious, by the way, uh, kicks off June 2nd and goes all the way until August 31st. Um, and there is a discount code, so I'm I'm not getting paid to say this, guys. I'm just letting you go, letting you guys know if you want to check it out yourselves. Um, but I will link to their episode where they announced the the knit along, and there is a discount code for Mayak yarns and. 
um, pick up every stitch. That's actually where this yarn is from. But if my memory serves me right, uh, the only thing you need to do to join the, the knit along is to knit something out of either Mayak yarns, uh, any pattern you want, or knit any Isabel Kramer pattern out of whatever yarn you want, or both, you know? So it's it seems like a really wonderful, wonderful knit along, and I'm excited to jump right in. So yay, awesome. All right, so that is all the fiber content that I have to share with you this week. Uh, I did pick up a knitting pro uh, knitting. I did pick up a quilting project, uh, a project that I've had languishing for a bit now. Um, but I'm very, very excited for the FO. I just don't know how quickly it's going to come to fruition. So, um, but that is my, my double wedding ring quilt, my friends. Uh, so here, here's one block or actually it's four blocks sewn together to create one big block. Um, and yeah, my friends, this is indeed a labor of love. Um, one of these blocks, I want to say, takes me about an hour to make. Just one of these little quadrants. It's it's a little crazy, guys. Um, so, because if you look really closely, each quadrant has little pieces, these little scraps sewn together, and then uh, all these curves that you have to sew around. So yeah, uh, lots of curve sewing, lots of little piece sewings and making sure that lines are matching up. But the other challenge that I'm facing with this is getting each piece to lie flat and not pucker up or tent. So yeah, it's it's not a relaxing project in the least. Um, although I'm trying to make it relaxing. I, I did find a good audiobook to listen to, so I've just kind of been you know, listening to that while I work on it and kind of distracting myself from the tediousness of it. Um, because seriously, guys, I, I've definitely been, um, what do you call it, an advocate of, you know, only working on things that bring you joy. If it doesn't bring you joy, then what's the point? I actually did a little bit of venting in the Facebook group, so thank you to the members in there who, you know, just had my back and just gave me a boost of confidence. I was on the fence about whether I want to keep going with this or just forget it and just repurpose the fabric for some, for another project, a more enjoyable one. Um, but the thing is, the thing is, I truly love the way that this is, the way that this is coming together. Um, it's beautiful. I love the pattern, the fabric, the way it's playing together, the colors. I am excited to have the, the finished object. Um, so it's, it's just a matter of me persevering. But the main takeaway and advice that I got from uh, the members in the Facebook group was to, you know, just, you know, do little by little whenever the spirit moves you, carve out, you know, a couple of minutes a day or every other week or so and just so on it, you know, and little by little, it'll come together. Eventually you will have a quilt. Um, and, and this, these are all things I've, I know this is stuff that I shared with you on, on this year channel, you know, just work on something a little bit every day and you'll be surprised how, how quickly things will come together. And I really just have to start practicing what I preach because <laughs> I, I definitely had a moment with this guys. Um, but yeah, I picked it up again. So I have, uh, one, one, quadrant, one block or whatever you want to call it. And I have two, um, three full. So three of these quadrants. And then I, I did start working on the fourth one. Um, so here, these are two blocks sewn together and I have the, I'm looking at the other ones on my sewing desk over there, my sewing table. Uh, I just have to finish those and I'll have a fourth one. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely a labor of love. So, um, in the meantime, you know, when I don't feel like working on that, I'm definitely going to put a, a dent in my log cabin quilt that is coming together very, very quickly. Um, it's almost scary how quickly that is coming together. I just have to make, make time for it. So anyway, thank you so much to the members in the Facebook group, which by the way, is a private, uh, Facebook group for members of this YouTube channel. Uh, if you would like to support this YouTube channel, you can do that by clicking on the join button down below this video. And for a fancy schmancy monthly cup of coffee, uh, you can enjoy a bonus vlog for me, the Monday Waffle, which is a super casual vlog where I catch you up on what I got up to over the weekend, creative wise and life wise, and you know, just a kind of like stream of consciousness as far as, you know, my creative process or what's inspiring me. Um, and it's just a casual waffle where I waffle on about things, hence the name Monday Waffle. Uh, and then yes, I just launched the, the Facebook group where, you know, yeah, it's a very intimate, close knit community that we're growing and it's just a wonderful place to share projects, what you're working on. My favorite is when members stumble on a pattern and they share it with the group. Uh, it just kind of like opens your eyes to other patterns and ideas. And yeah, it's just such 
a, a well of inf inspiration. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I, I'm so glad that it's growing the way it's growing. So anyway, uh, yeah, thank you so much to, to members of this channel for supporting it. Um, and yeah, again, if you would like to support this channel, just click on the join button below. But just FYI, the um, Monday Waffle and the Facebook group are available only to members of the A Cup of Something and Up tiers. Uh, there is a, a lower tier uh, for people who just want to, you know, they don't need the extras, they just want to support the channel, which is completely fine, and I truly appreciate that. Um, but just so you know, be sure to check which tier you're signing up for if you want those benefits. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. Uh, that is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. And nothing really to write home about as far as life stuff, things are pretty status quo. I did gift the socks to my mother-in-law. She loves them. Uh, Carol, I hope I hope you're enjoying them uh, and, and the like. Uh, but other than that, yeah, Dennis and I, uh, we, we've got stuff to do this weekend, a lot of stuff still. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to find looking forward to some downtime relaxing and I don't know maybe maybe I'll work maybe I will put another dent in my <laughs> in my double wedding ring quilt but yeah other than that nothing really to write home about but uh, anyway thank you so much as always for hanging out with me if you're new here welcome uh, if you haven't already feel free to like and subscribe down below I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure every week and until the next video have a fantastic weekend i <laughs> will see you next time bye